Hello folks! In this video I'm going to continue working on Flappy Bird in Pygame. Last time I got as far as loading in most of the sprites and I've got this uh, scrolling motion on the ground and the bird's got this little animation on it. But what's missing is any up and down motion. And that is what I want to work on in this video. So adding in this uh, jumping and this gravity is actually quite straightforward. I'll, then, I'll show it with this uh, image that I've got here. So I've got these two arrows which represent each of the forces. So red is the gravity that's constantly acting on the bird. All that is going to be doing is increasing a new variable which I'll define in here as my velocity. So as velocity increases every iteration of the loop, the y coordinate of the bird just gets increased by that velocity. So I just add it to it. At the same time, I've got this blue arrow which represents any time I click the mouse. So whenever I click the mouse, the bird flaps and it gets a temporary boost to its velocity to move it up the way. So if I just code these both of these in separately, they're going to work together to create this natural motion of the bird up and down. So I'll just go straight into my code and where I've got my bird class, I can add it within the update function because this essentially is where I'm handling the animation and all the movement. Uh, but before I do that, actually, I need to define this new variable that I was speaking of, which is my velocity. So I'll say self.vel equals zero. I'll start it off with nothing. And within here, all I need to be doing, as I said, is just increasing this velocity every iteration so that the bird accelerates. So I'm just going to set it to 0 0.5. And with that done, I just add that to the y coordinate of the bird. So self.rec.y add self.vel. And that's it. But because this self.vel variable is a float, I want to wrap this in an integer function. So if I run this code now, it will work fine, but what will happen is that the, the rectangle value is just going to keep increasing by this velocity, and eventually it's just going to go off the bottom of the screen. I don't want it to go there, I just want it to stop when it hits the ground. So the ground at the moment is blitted at a y coordinate of 7, 6, 8. So that means that I only want the bird to be affected by gravity and fall down as long as it's above this value. So let's just add an if statement here. If self.rec.bottom, so if the underneath of the bird is less than 768, which remember the y coordinates are flipped, so that means it's above ground, only in that case do I want it to keep dropping. So let's run this code and see what happens. There you go, it just drops straight down. The other thing that isn't maybe initially or immediately obvious is that I have no limit on this self velocity. So although the bird has set the ground, it's just going to keep increasing. So I can actually demonstrate this by adding a print. And if you keep an eye on the console, you're going to see what happens to that value. It just keeps going and going. So that's not great. You kind of want a limit on that. So I'm going to add a limit of 8. So I'll just say if self.vel exceeds 8, then just reset it to 8. So it's kind of like a cap. It just limits it. Anytime it exceeds that, well, we just reset it back to that value. Try that again. And you can see as soon as it hits 8, it stops increasing. So that's fine. That's gravity added in. The next thing to add in then is jumping, uh, which I'll just do right below here. So I'll add a little comment to jump, and uh, actually I'll add a comment up here as well, gravity, just to explain what's going on. So jumping is going to be happening whenever I click the mouse. That means I just need to look for a Pygame event. So I'll say if pygame.mouse.get underscore pressed. Uh, essentially this function here, pygamemouse.get pressed, is just constantly looking for whether or not mouse clicks have happened. And it returns a list which corresponds to your left, middle, and right um, mouse buttons. So the one I'm looking for is a left click, which means I need to access the zeroth index, which is always the first one. Uh, and if this is equal to one, that means that the mouse button has been clicked. So if that's the case, then I want the bird to jump. So remember, positive velocity moves the bird down the way. So if I wanted to go up the way, I just need to give it a negative velocity. So we'll just say self.vel equals minus 10. So as soon as that happens, the bird will kind of jump up the way. But remember, I've got this at every iteration. So it's going to move, my, it's going to set to minus 10, and then it's going to go minus 9.5, minus 9, minus 8.5. So it's just going to bring the bird back down in this curve. So let's run this code, see what happens. And there we go. I can move the bird back up by clicking. However, if I hold the mouse button, it just keeps going and going. So to avoid this, I need to add a little trigger. I want to look for not just when the mouse has been clicked, but when it's also been released. So to that, I can add a little trigger, which is going to be my self.clicked variable. To start off, I'll set it to false because nothing has been clicked. And now within here, I can check for it. I can say and self.clicked is false. So as long as I haven't already clicked the mouse button, then I process this function. But as soon as I have, well, 
it's been clicked. So let's set that to true. So that's fine, but that means that I can only do it once because I have no way of setting it back to false. So I can just copy this code back down and look for essentially the opposite. So now instead of looking for the mouse being clicked, I'm looking for the mouse being released. So if the mouse is not clicked, well, that means that self-clicked is false. So let's try this again. Uh, whoops, what have I done here? I've uh, forgotten a colon at the end. Try that again. And there we go. I can't hold the mouse button anymore. I can only click and the bar will fly up. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's all the code that I need to add to add this uh, physics up and down. However, it's a little bit bland. If you notice the bird, it just stays horizontal. No matter what it goes, if it's falling down the way or if it's going up, it just stays horizontal. And it would be nice to have a little bit of kind of rotation just to make the game a little bit more, uh, I suppose, a bit more polished. So that, again, is very straightforward to add because Pygame has a rotate function for images. So if I just come down here, I've got my animation. Uh, I don't really want to touch that. I just want to go underneath where I've got my animation and add in this rotation. So I'll just add a comment to say, rotate the bird. And I say the image is going to be pygame.transform.rotate. So this is the function for rotating the image. So the first thing you do is feed in the source image that you want to rotate. Now, I always take my image from the images list. If you remember, it's essentially this here. So my images list at the point of the index. So whatever point I'm at in the animation, I want to take that picture and I want to rotate it. So the rotation, I want to be relative to the velocity. So when the bird is moving up, I want it to face up. And when it's falling down, I want it to face down. So this variable here is going to be the angle of rotation. And it's by default, it's counterclockwise. So if I put an angle of 10 degrees, it will rotate anti-clockwise. Now, if I want the bird to be looking up the way when it's flapping up, uh, that would give me this negative value here. So if I if I just put in self.vel and run this code, it, you can see it, it goes the opposite way. So instead of facing the way that it's falling or the way that it's jumping, it faces the opposite direction. And that's just because this is counterclockwise. So when the bird is falling down, the velocity is positive. So it should be rotating clockwise, but this positive value rotates anti-clockwise. So I just need to multiply this by a negative value. So let's just say minus one and run this again. And it is working, but it's not that obvious what's going on. So I'm just going to amplify it a little bit. I'll multiply it by minus two instead. And the movement is now more pronounced. So there you go. You can see it's got a little bit more kind of life to it because it kind of reflects what it is that it's doing. It's either moving up or moving down and it points in that direction. Uh, one other thing that's missing though, uh, I'll run the code again. It, it just starts straight away. I don't really want that. I, I want to be able to have a chance to actually start the game myself. So as soon as I run it, it just falls. So there's a simple fix to add this. I'm going to add a trigger at the beginning, which is going to go within my uh, event handling. So where right at the bottom, I've got this event for looking for the clicking the quit button, I want to add an extra event that's going to start the game. And that event is just going to be a click of the mouse. So before I do anything, I'll define a new variable. And this variable up here in my system variables is going to be uh, flying. I'll set flying to false, first of all. So the bird is not flying. Now I can come back into here and look for another event. So the event that I'm looking for now is a mouse click. So let's just say pie game. And mouse clicks are defined as mouse button down. So if the mouse has been clicked, then we set flying to true. So now the bird can start to fly. I'll also add that in here just uh, as a check. So I don't I don't want it to be setting to true if it's already true. So we'll just say only if, uh, if flying is currently false and we've clicked the mouse, well then set it to true. So once flying becomes set to true, only then do I really want it to be affected by gravity. So I'll come up here and I'll just wrap this in an if statement. So if flying is true, then carry out all of this code. So let's run the code again. And there you go, nothing's happening. The bird is flapping along happily, but it's just going in a horizontal line. As soon as I click the mouse, the game starts proper. So that's working a little bit better. But now if I release the mouse, let the game, uh, let the bird drop, it just hits the ground and just scrapes its face along this scrolling ground. So I don't really want that. I want the game to end when that happens. And that is also quite easy to add in. So I've got my flying variable. I want another variable for game over. So game over again, it's going to start off as false. 
Uh, and now I can come into here where I've got my event handler and just add it into here as well. So if game over is false. So basically right at the beginning of the game, that this is what this is doing. It's, it just means that these conditions are going to be both be false right when I first uh, run the code. And then I just need to click the game, I uh, click the mouse, sorry, and then it starts off the game. And uh, now I need to look for a game over condition. So that only really happens when the bird has hit the ground, right? So wherever I've got this update at the moment, uh, I've got my bird group draw and bird group update. I'm drawing the flappy bird just underneath that. I want to look for this initial collision with the ground. So I'll add a little comment to say, uh, check, check if a bird has hit ground. And I'm just looking for the Y coordinate. So I go to my instance, which is flappy. So that's the instance of that bird. And I take the rectangle from it and I look for where the bottom of that rectangle is. So if that has gone beyond 768, which is where the ground starts, well, that means that I've hit the ground. So it's game over. Game over is true. And the bird can't be flying anymore, so flying is false. So when the game is over, well, I don't really want to scroll the ground anymore. So uh, I'll move this blit out of here because I do want the, the ground to always be shown. It's just I don't want to keep increasing this variable. So I don't want it to scroll. I just want it to be stationary. So I'll move it up here where I've got the rest of my drawing uh, and updating happening. I'll add a little comment to say, uh, draw the ground. And then I'll wrap this little uh, piece of code here within another if statement. So if game over is false, so as long as the game hasn't ended, then keep scrolling the ground. So let's try this code now. Okay, so I'll click to start the game and then let the bird hit the ground. There you go. It stopped moving, but it's still it's still desperately flapping away. And when I click, it still tries to jump and rotate. So I want to get rid of that as well by adding this game over variable within the update function. And all that means is, so I've got this gravity only applying when the bird is flying and all of this other stuff, I only want that to happen when game over is false. So as long as the game is still running, uh, so I'll just say if game over, equals false, only then do you want to carry all this out. As soon as game over has been set to true, stop doing all of this kind of stuff. If game over has become true, let's just add a little else here. If game over is true, I want to kind of show that the game is finished, the bird is, well, dead. So to do that, I'm going to add a little extra rotation. I'll take this rotate function, add it in here, but this time I just want to turn the bird kind of like completely on its side. So instead of having this variable controlled, I would just set a complete number. And this is going to be minus 90 degrees. So remember this is anti-clockwise. So when I say minus 90, it means that the bird just rotates 90 degrees clockwise and it just faces the ground. Let's try this code now. And I'll just hit the ground. And there you go. Everything stops and the bird is dead. I can't keep clicking to start the game. So that's quite a lot of the functionality already built in. Obviously, I don't have the pipes or anything. I don't have a score counter, but it's really starting to come together. So that's everything for this video. Uh, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.